Never before have we been faced with so many choices about how we should think, act, and live. How should we spend our time, our resources, and our money? Blessed are the pure in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. How do we view ourselves and those around us? Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. How can we find true success and lasting happiness? Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. How can we know what is right and true? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. How can we make sense of suffering and loss? Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And those of us who want to continue with Jesus need to choose him and choose each other in a deeper way. Welcome to the choices we face. Welcome to another week of the choices we face. We're very happy today to have with us Father Bob Bedard, who's the founder of a new religious order in Canada called Companions of the Cross. Welcome, Father Bob. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you very much. And we have Father, we have a Father, Peter Herbeck, who's the father of yeah, four you. children. Right, right. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the journey that's led you to found a religious order. Well, it's been quite an adventure. Yeah. Well, how, how, did, how did it all happen for you? You were a, a diocesan priest yes. in the Archdiocese of Ottawa? That's or? right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Taught high school 20 years as a priest. Never wanted to, but uh, once I got into it, I really, really liked it. Liked it a lot. But then the time came when it, when it ended, and um, I was working full-time in, in renewal stuff, going around talking, mostly in Canada, but quite, uh, quite a bit in the, in the U.S. as well but I never broke beyond those barriers. Um, and then after, uh, after I was ordained for 30 years, no less, the, uh, the Archbishop uh, asked me to uh, become pastor. Well, he told me to become a pastor. So those are the to, days when Archbishops told people. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although he was very good about it, but yeah, that was yeah. basically it. I wasn't going to escape any longer, is the way he put it, uh, <laughs> so, which I had tried to do. But... Uh, so I started there. <clears throat> but uh, one of the things I'd always been keen about was uh, encouraging young men to consider a call to the priesthood. Mm. And nothing worked, basically. Basically nothing worked. It was like a, a very frustrating to, uh, part of my uh, effort sort of thing. Just didn't happen. But uh, shortly before I got the call to, to go to the parish, there was one young fellow that I was uh, talking with, sort of counseling with a bit, uh, spiritual direction. He uh, he went into the seminary, and that was my first vocation sort of thing. If he if he lasted, which he did, uh, that I had sort of encouraged and had some role in, uh, and that was great. Now, it was it was amazing, Ralph, how how you you yourself worked into this whole thing. Yeah. Because I think it was in the summer of 82, I hope that's not before it was published, I read uh, the choices, not the choices, that's the name of this program, but the crisis in, in the church. Crisis, mm. crisis of, of truth. Of yeah. truth. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's the year, yeah. Is that the year? Yeah. Yeah, I read it and I thought I was terribly impressed. It was very prophetic, you know? Uh, and I thought, whoa, boy, this is, a, this is really something that, to think that this is going on in the church. And I was, I was shocked. I was appalled, appalled. And... Uh, I, uh, you know, I, like I, I gradually became uh, educated in the whole situation. I became aware of, uh, of what seminaries were doing and not doing. And the, the same thing was happening in, in Canada, in Toronto, seminary there, and the seminary in Ottawa as well. <coughs> However, I wasn't afraid of my, my, uh, my young friend going in because he was basically a, it was a tough slugger, you know. He, uh, plus, he also knew how to play the game, as he said. I will play the game, he said, till I hit the cathedral floor. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. give it a then I'll show my true colors. I said, it doesn't sound like a word from the Lord, you know, play the game. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure what, what they're supposed, supposed to do. But, uh, so that was it. But after he had been in there for three or even four years, whatever, whatever years it was, um, his brother and two other young men, all of whom I had been doing a bit of directing with, uh, 
in different, like they they not not consulting with with one another, but they came to tell me that they were sensing this call to the priesthood and they wanted to go into the seminary. So I was uh, basically alarmed, delighted that this is what they had in mind, but I was quite alarmed uh, at the thought of putting them in to the local seminary, which is where they would have to go, because it was rife with bad teaching. And the formation, uh, the formation was, uh, well, I don't know what to call it, but it was anything but Catholic, you know. Maybe deformation. That's right, yeah, deformation. <laughs> and there was a whole homosexual undercurrent to the thing, you know, in the seminary and all that. All of which, I don't think scandalized, I think of quite beyond being scandalized, but, uh, but uh, really uh, made me concerned, you know. Sure. But I wasn't sure how these guys would do, because they weren't the tough and play the game, flexible types that this, this first guy was. So I spoke to the first guy about it. I said, I, I'm really concerned. I don't know what we're going to do. Like, these guys are able to get in there and object to something in class and get thrown out <laughs> or something <laughs> yeah. in the seminary. And, uh, you know, because you know how headstrong uh, your brother is, I said, plus the other guys, you know, they're not going to sit back and take it. Yeah. So he said, yeah, yeah. He said, well, uh, that's the problem, you know. He said, I don't think we're going to be able to get them to play the game the way you have been so good at it. And uh, he said, yeah, you're probably right. He said, well, why don't we just form up a little share group of the three of them, me, and you, he said, and meet every week if you'd be willing to do that. I said, I'd be more than willing to do that. You think you can get the guys out of the table? Oh, sure, they can walk out any time. They're, they're, it's very <laughs> lax. You know, so totally <laughs> different. one advantage anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right. Yeah. Totally different from my own seminary experience where you couldn't put a, put a foot outside the the grounds without somebody's almost written permission. Uh, so yeah, so we began to meet every every Friday night, and we you know we would pray together, sing praise the Lord. They would share, and I would you know share the week's triumphs and not so good you know defeats and whatnot. And uh, then we would pray over one another, and uh, we'd be open to uh, to word from the Lord you know. Mm -hmm. And I was encouraging them to uh, to pray with which I've been, I've been encouraged some people for some years, I still do, is tell the Lord every day that you'll do anything He wants. Mm. You know, like to me that opens the door for the Lord to speak. Mm -hmm. You know, and He deals with the heart. Mm -hmm. he, can, uh, he can change hearts, <clears throat> which is something I can't do. I don't think anybody can do. It's only the grace of God can change hearts. So, uh, you know, tell the Lord you'll do whatever He wants. And, you know, if there's anything, there's a word, come and just share it at the meeting and so on. So yeah, so they're into that. They're very prayerful guys, and it was it was, it was quite a quite an enriching experience, uh, even for me. I was amazed. Uh, and of course, I saw myself as the father figure uh, who would go on after they were ordained and be here for you and all that kind of thing. That was that was obviously my role in this whole thing. So uh, uh, let's see now. I think it was, I think we meet, started to meet in September of uh, '84. I think something something in there, September of '84. And uh, by November, one of them said, "I think you know that the uh, uh, the Lord wants the the uh, relationships that are building here. You know, the bonding that's taking place." And it was to uh, stay together after ordination. He wants these, these relationships to endure. And they were, hey, that's right on, right on. And I'm saying, yeah, well, right on, absolutely. That's the word from the Lord. And to me, that's, uh, that's the key to a, to a body of people that are engaged in the same ministry or the same call from the Lord. That's the key to hearing from Him. It's when all are saying, Lord, we do anything you say. What I think he will do is give the word to one of them who will speak it when they're together, although the others perhaps hadn't even thought of it, right away, as soon as they hear it, they say, that's it. You yeah. know, that, that's that immediate confirmation. There's yeah. something in their spirits and their hearts. They know it's true. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I see it in Scripture, in uh, Acts chapter uh, 13, you know, in Antioch, uh, Saul and Barnabas, and Antioch, uh, you know, they were two of the five prophets of the church and so on. And they were celebrating, the translation I like, is the liturgy of the Lord. 
celebrating the liturgy of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit spoke to them. I want Barnabas and Saul set aside for the task that I have in mind. And I, uh, like I presume that what happened there was just what happened with us. Is one person spoke the, the word, all the rest, all, you know, totally committed to the Lord, th that's it. Uh, anyway, so that's, that's what happened. Uh, in, in February of the, the following year, 85, uh, one of them came one night and he said, uh, I believe the Lord wants these brothers, call themselves brothers by this time, <clears throat> I believe the Lord wants the brothers here to, uh, to work together. So right away, everybody said, oh yeah, that's, that, but it's obvious. They have the same <laughs> vision, you know, why wouldn't they work together? I mean, sometimes it's difficult to work with somebody else who doesn't have the same vision. Well, sometimes it's very difficult to work with somebody with, who has a different vision. Sure. So uh, that was fine. Uh, come May of 85, May of 85, this was the, this was D-Day or, or something. This was the pivotal day of the whole thing where one of them comes and he says, I'm not sure what you guys are going to think about this, but I believe the Lord is telling this group to live together. And right away, everybody said, oh, that's it, right on. Oh, yeah, like the daily support, like this, this is great. And I'm saying, yeah, yeah, that's, that's great, that's right on. And as I'm thinking about it quickly, of course, I don't usually think very quickly, but I was pretty fast that day, and they, they weren't picking up the implications, yeah. the ramifications. Uh, right away, I realized, of course, this is a canonical thing we're talking about. We're talking about getting people ordained. We're talking about a we're talking about a new community of priests here. There must have been something when those first words were spoken. Yeah. You know, you realize that that's what you were on the brink of. I know. I yeah. was, uh, you know, I was on the verge of uh, ecstasy on the one hand and having a heart attack on the other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I said, look, hey, don't. This, ha this happens to other people. Well, how is it happening to us? That's yeah, right. right. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I'm not familiar with this. <laughs> yeah. Haven't been down this road before. So it's like I said, well, don't get your hopes up because uh, uh, the bishop will never go for it. Oh, yes, he will. They said, oh, sure, if, if God wants, the Lord wants it, he'll have it all. I said, I know, I know that. That I know. <laughs> that I know. I know how God operates, I think, by this time. Uh, but uh, I also know the bishop. And I know how <laughs> he operates. <laughs> I know him, see? And he will not go for this. I said, what would, what would you think? How would you think about it if one of your priests come in one day, you're a bishop, I said, wonderful news, uh, Your Grace. He's an archbishop. Wonderful news. One of your priests and three, uh, three of your, four of your seminarians are going to leave and do their own thing. How's that? Is that wonderful? <laughs> you know? said, well, just what he wanted to hear. That's right. right. Just, just what he's waiting for. So, uh, so that was it. I said, you know, well, somebody's going to have to go and talk to him, and that's, you know, so. I said, which one of you guys want to go and explain this? And, of course, all fingers pointed to him. To me, which I knew, I knew I had to do this, so so I go in petrified, absolutely petrified. The Archbishop was very, uh, he has re retired since, so we have another bishop, but he was very, uh, like he was an enigma, he was an enigmatic figure. I could never figure him out. I could never predict what he was going to say. He would surprise you quite a bit. Uh, not only that, he was explosive. He could <laughs> blow up. <laughs> you know, and people were really walking on egg, and he could fire off letters to that would just, you wouldn't believe it, almost the paper almost burning up. <laughs> his, his secretary, uh, one, of the, one of the sisters, uh, I got to know her a bit in my visits <coughs> with him and all that. And, As you were uh, cooling your heels in the waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah, well, so, <laughs> you became friends with the secretary. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. So... Uh, <laughs> I said, like, um, is the Archbishop uh, right sometimes the way he talks? Like, so it was very strong. He said, oh, well, Father, you, you don't know the half of it. She said, you don't know that. She said, I, uh, uh, sometimes I change the wording. <laughs> she edits it. Yeah. yeah I, uh, you know, and he'll come, he'll come in the next day and say, did you, have you got that? Like, yeah. Did you send it just the way it is? He said, no, I changed it. Oh, good, good. I was a little upset yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, but. So, so he, was, he was prophetic. He was prophetic, I should say. He was explosive, uh, and he was enigmatic, but he was prophetic. He really was. So uh, I explained this to him. Sits behind his desk with his hands folded like this, with a, 
an enigmatic smile on his face, something like Mona Lisa. <laughs> you know, people look at the picture and say, what is she thinking? Yeah, yeah. That's where I was. You know? And when I was finished talking, um, he said, well, it's the, vision, the vision you describe, he said, is not your vision, it's mine, he said. Well, it totally floored me. I said, uh, uh, yeah, oh, yeah well, you, you like it? He says, I've been talking for years and writing, in fact, about the future of the church or the future of the priesthood. And I've been saying that priests in the future, things are going to be different. Priests are going to have to learn to work together more and even some of them to live together. Uh, he said, of course, the old fellows, you can't teach them anything, but we have to prepare the young ones for this eventuality. Uh, so he said, in all honesty, I can do nothing but uh, support what you're saying. Isn't that wonderful? Well, well Father, we're just going to take a little break right yeah. now, and we're going to come back and hear the rest of the story. <laughs> Are you searching for ways to grow in prayer and holiness, in reading and sharing the good news, and in living as a disciple of Christ? Do you want to be challenged, encouraged, and strengthened in living out your faith daily? Then join us this summer at the Renewal Ministries Institute. The schools of the Renewal Ministries Institute are an answer to the Holy Father's call for all Christians to participate in a new evangelization. Noted biblical scholars and lay missionaries join the Renewal Ministries staff to provide dynamic, orthodox teachings that will re-energize your faith. Daily participation in the sacraments, worship, prayer ministry, adoration, and fellowship with Catholics from around the world will revive and deepen your commitment to the Church's mission. Call 734-662-1730 today or visit us on the web at RenewalMinistries.net to find out more about the Renewal Ministries Institute. You know, we're having a very interesting conversation with Father Bob Bedard, who's the founder of a new religious order of priests called Companions of the Cross in Ottawa, Canada. And Father Bob's just told us the fascinating story of how Little by little, it just sort of happened that a, a group of young men and Father Bob just felt like, hey, we ought to share together, we ought to work together, we ought to live together. And Father Bob says, you're talking about a religious order. Yeah. And then he went to the Archbishop, and the Archbishop says, yes, this is what needs to happen for the future of the Church. That was 20 years ago. So where are things at today? Well, it's been a, it's been a, long, uh, a long ride, and it's been a real adventure. Uh, most of the things that have happened, we, we couldn't possibly have foreseen. Uh, I guess the devil really, uh, you know, didn't like what we were doing because he began, to, I guess, to fire some pretty heavy shots. <clears throat> and all kinds of difficulty with, uh, with men uh, trying to get them prepared for the things that they, they wound up doing uh, and not really being terribly uh, knowledgeable ourselves and the whole uh, ministry today in the church uh, situation where there are so many agendas and so much pressure upon priests, particularly pastors of parishes, to conform to this, conform to that, edicts from the, from the uh, chancery, uh, people, you know, we've got to do this, we've got to do that, if we don't, we'll, you know, blah, 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 and so on. So a lot of the guys have had difficulty dealing with this, so we've had sort of trying to retrench and get guys more uh, preparation even after they're, they're ordained and stuff like that. So it's been, it's been tough that way. However, the, uh, the Lord has uh, continued to be in it. Uh, we kind of leveled off a bit the last little while, but we're sort of uh, looking to, to a point where uh, I think the, uh, the numbers are going to start galloping again. Uh, but in the beginning, uh, there was a lot of interest. We didn't advertise. We felt the Lord say, don't advertise about the Lord saying, I want you to become skilled in waiting for me, <laughs> you know, and uh, like not to go rush it, just wait for the word. I mean, this was so important. Uh, don't rush it, just don't get ahead of me, wait till I speak, then do it, you know. So uh, we're trying to learn all these things at the beginning. Uh, the, the vision was, was we were to be Eucharistic, uh, charismatic, uh, Marian. Uh, and uh, magisterial, as we say, all the good stuff, all of it. <laughs> Plus, our charism was to be evangelization. Mm -hmm. You know, understanding it in the in the uh, the way that 
I know you understand it from experience, is presenting the, the, uh, the good news and inviting people to respond to it. Mm -hmm. And embrace, embrace Jesus, you know, Savior, Lord, and so on. And when that happens, uh, the door opens for the Holy Spirit to mm -hmm. either stir up or enter in and uh, explode, you know, so people change. There's, uh, and that, that's, yeah, that's what we do. The, everything we do, as we say, we want to be evangelistic, whether it's in a parish or in a one-on-one -on -one or anywhere else, you know. How many uh, priests and seminarians are, are part of Companions of the Cross right now? There are, I think we have 30, 31 priests, and I think well, there are four to be ordained this year. So there'll be 35 priests and close to 40 seminarians at this point. That's really wonderful. It is wonderful. Yeah, praise the Lord. Yeah, so. and they're just, and they're very high quality guys. I was able to give a retreat a couple of years ago oh, up, that's uh, right. up in Ottawa. Yeah, yeah. and I was just uh -huh. so impressed with the quality, the zeal, the health, uh, the spirit, uh, the manly character, quality, the whole thing. And then some of the guys, as, as you know, have gone on mission trips with us in different parts of the world. That's Father right. Scott went to Ghana. Um, Father John went to Tanzania and gave a retreat for priests, and right. it's been a, just a joy. And the seminarians, because they speak French, went with us to Rwanda mm -hmm. this past year, and they really That's helped in the ministry, yeah. and they're dynamic young seminarians yeah. who had a, brought a lot to the table. So yeah. it's, it's been a blessing for us to be able to be associated yeah. with the companions, because yeah. they're really bearing fruit, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they, they, there's a, it's a very gifted bunch of the guys, and most of their hearts are just really set on the Lord and open to the Spirit, so it's great. Where are you, where are you serving now? You serve in parishes? We do parishes, yeah. We mm -hmm. have three in Ottawa, our home base, uh, one in Toronto, one in Houston, Texas, and one in, or two rather, in Halifax, East Coast, Hal uh, Nova Scotia. Uh, and we, we do chaplaincies in Toronto and Halifax, university chaplaincies. And uh, we have a, a very large Catholic charismatic center in Houston, mm -hmm. Texas, where uh, the chapel, we're told, uh, well, I've seen it, uh, can accommodate 3,000 people, so it's a big. The former uh, director of the said is arguably one of the largest Catholic churches in the United States. Mm. I thought, oh, well, how about that? So there's a, there's a lot of <laughs> possibility, you know. Well, blessed are the people in Houston and Toronto and Ottawa and Halifax who have the Companions of the Cross serving in those cities. Well, nice of you to say so. <laughs> you know, it's like we're, we're cat running to catch up with the Lord. You know? So, so long, and I, I've heard you say it too, uh, I've complained to the Lord, Lord, you're not doing anything. Why can't you do something? We're asleep. This whole church, we're just dead asleep. <laughs> Could you not start something somewhere? <laughs> You know, that's where I was until now. It's like, well, could you kindly slow down? I'm, you know, let us catch up with you. Yeah. And, uh, what what like were that. some of the things you feel like you learned over the years, maybe spiritual lessons or principles that could be of use just to the average person listening to, to us right now? Well, to, to seek the word of the Lord for your life, you know. Uh, we deal with that at a very basic level with the seminarians, you know, discerning the call for their lives. But in a, in a have less, uh, less critical type way. The Lord does have uh, plans for us. You know, somebody gets a job offer, uh, it seems better, should you, should you take it? Well, consult the Lord, you know. The whole thing of consult the Lord on everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, don't go, don't do it until you get the green light from the Lord. So uh, yeah, consult the Lord, get the word. You know, how, so one of the things that, that we, we teach is how to do that. It's really simple. The Lord deals with the heart. He puts it in your heart. You know, I said, tell the seminarians, he will never ask you to do something that you don't want to do. They find that mm -hmm. it's hard, and, and not only the seminarians, but you know, married couples, families, uh, groups that are working together in the church or wherever you're doing it. Uh, he will never ask you to do something unless you want to do it yourself. And, uh, like the, the key is that he can change hearts. It's like uh, giving, your, uh, giving your permission for the Lord, that's one of the key words we have, giving your permission to the Lord to do whatever he wants with you and in you and around you and so on, is like giving him your heart. And he can deal with hearts, he loves hearts, he's masterful at changing hearts to where he wants them to be. I've had my heart changed two or three times, almost 180 degrees. Mm. You know, I love teaching. I sensed the word was, I want you to leave teaching. I said, no, no, no. 
I want you to do what I want you to do. Yes, Lord, I'll do whatever you say. Whatever. I, I, I saw my heart change from love teacher to the point where I couldn't get out of the classroom fast enough. I said, that's so strange. How can that happen? Well, he <clears> changed <throat> my heart. He can do that. So when I had to leave, I wanted to leave. And that People have difficulty getting their heads around that, but it's so simple and so true. Yeah. It's so consistent. Yeah. You know, so... Uh, Though that's certainly a big, big lesson, and waiting on the Lord, you know, giving permission to the Lord. I'd never heard the word permission uh, in prayer in a spiritual context until I heard it in prayer one day when I had just become pastor, and the parish was just so empty and so, you know, woo. You know, and I panicked and everything else, and uh, prayer, pr pray like mad, panic prayer, you know, yeah. which is, uh, sometimes it's quite effective. And the Lord uh, seemed to give me the word permission. I want your permission. Okay. Well, you know, Father, we're going to have to draw to a close, but I, I know before the program we were talking about you doing some writing, and I hope you really do put these things in writing because they're going to be really helpful for many, yeah, many people. Yeah, a lot of them are right now. Yeah. yeah, I'd like to say a special word to our viewers in Canada. You know, really, what, what a blessing that, a, that an order like this would be beginning and, and be able to serve in, in your country. And I'd just like to encourage you to support the Companions of the Cross in any way you can through prayer, through financial giving. If you know young men who are considering a vocation, what a wonderful place for them to go and to start to be a priest. And those of us in the United States and other countries, you know, the, the more that this happens anywhere in the world, uh, it's going to be b good for all of us. So don't be jealous of what's happening in Canada. Thank God for what he's doing. And if it can happen in Canada, it can happen in other places. And wherever it happens, it, it makes it more possible for it to happen to other places as well. So let's pray for the Companions of the Cross. Let's thank God for what he's doing with them. Let's ask him to continue to pour out his Holy Spirit in the whole church. I've written a booklet called What Happens When I Die, and we'd like to offer it to you at no cost just for the asking to help you surrender more to the Lord. Call the 800 number, write to the address, access our website, and we'll get it off to you right away. Until next week, this is Ralph Martin and Father Bob Bedard and Peter Herbeck wishing the very best a life spent in giving God permission to do whatever he wants with you and to change your heart in any way he wants and telling him each day, Lord, I'll do whatever you want me to do today. Life is short and the years fly by with increasing speed. Life is fragile and the fate of all human flesh is death. At some point, we all ask, what happens when I die? Is there life after death? What will it be like? How does what I do in this life affect what happens when I die? My booklet provides some answers to these important questions by reflecting on what scripture and the church say about what happens when I die. To receive this free booklet, call Renewal Ministries at 1-800-282-4789 or visit us on the web at renewalministries.net.